Hi, I'm Jay Haskamp, and I'd like to welcome you to another Tech Talk by Frontier Precision. In today's session, we're going to look at the dynamic labeling tools in Trimble Business Center 3.5. In this session, we're going to first configure the label styles using the Label Style Manager. And then once we have things set up the way that we like, we're going to go ahead and label some lines, arcs, and points in a project. And then once those objects are labeled, we're going to show you how TBC will dynamically update our labels when we make any changes to the drawing. Then we're going to configure our dimension styles using the Dimension Style Manager. And lastly, we're going to dimension a pair of lines and also do an angular dimension. So let's take a look at how these tools work. Okay, in this TBC project, we have several objects here that we're going to label. Here you can see we're, we have some lines we're going to label. We have an arc. We have a couple of lines here we're going to dimension, um, a distance between the two, and then we also have a, a point that we're going to label. So uh, TBC version 3.5, uh, the latest version that's now out, allows us to um, dynamically label all of these objects. So before we do some of the labeling, we want to first take a look at our, our label styles or set up our styles. And this is going to dictate you know, the type of text we use, the position of the labels, um, what label information we're actually getting, and things like that. So to begin, under the CAD tab, if we look under the labeling group here, we can see the label style manager. If we open the label style manager, we have the ability to create our own label styles where we can um, pre-select or define text, the type of font, and all that type of information. Um, I'm just going to run with the default which I have right now. I believe my standard text style right here is actually set to um, be an Arial uh, font, which I can see right here. Now, the next thing we need to look at is the label properties here on the right. We have a preview on the left, and we can kind of select um, where we want these label positions to be by using these arrow buttons here. You can see I can move this around. And then I can also select which label I want to work with by picking it on the screen here. So to begin, let's take a look at, uh, for a line label, um, what we want on the top, and then for uh, what we want on the bottom. Let's say I actually want my uh, angular label to be on the top and the distance labeled to be on the bottom, I can then basically swap these two around and do that. Or if I want them to be on the same side of the line, I can bring these up and I can specify how I separate them like that. Maybe I want them a little closer, something like that. Now, if I look at here, when I choose this, it's saying, what do you want to label? Do you want the length, the azimuth, or the slope? Right now I have the azimuth selected, and you can see when I choose the distance, now I have the length selected. Now, based on what I have selected here, I have some different settings I can use here. So for uh, unit suffix, I can use whatever I have in the project setting. Precision, um, how many decimal places, maybe I'm only interested in two. So if I choose, say, the distance here, and I set that to two, notice that changes my um, my decimal places to two, and then my offset um, above and along. So I can set all this up. Now notice this right here is an azimuth. It's not a bearing, but maybe for my my project or my drawing, I want it to have a bearing label. So this is dictated by our project settings. So right now this tells me my project settings are set to display an azimuth. If I want this to be in a bearing, what I need to do is close this and open my project settings and change it to bearing. So let's take a look at how we do that going to click OK here to save the changes that I've made and then I'm going to open my project settings up on top and under units and azimuth I'm going to change the display from north azimuth to bearing. Now when I hit OK and go back into my label style manager notice this is now labeled with the north and the east directions indicating that this is now a bank uh, indicating that this is now a bearing label and not an azimuth. So this looks good to me. The next thing I want to look at is my arc. So I have an arc here. Now under my arc um, labels, again I want to uh, I want to move this over and move this up. And let's maybe move this over a little bit here. I'm just going to kind of fine tune this. So now when I pick this distance here, 
my label type, you can see I have a lot of different um, a lot of different options here. So I want to have my maybe my arc length listed here, and maybe I want it set to two decimal places. And then now notice this right here is my arc chord bearing. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want my uh, my radius in there instead. So I can choose this chord bearing and hit remove and notice it takes it out of the uh, of the label here. Now if I switch this to radius and hit add, now you can see that it has my radius in here. And maybe I want a prefix of R equals for my radius so I know that that's the radius here. And then maybe I also want to put in my um, delta angle. So I add my delta angle and now I need to do a little uh, moving around here. Move these over and move that over there. And maybe I'll put D for delta. And now I've got my delta angle. So I can have this be above or below the curve and um, kind of put these closer, farther apart, however I want these to be. Um, if this looks good, I'm going to uh, to keep this and now I want to move on to my point styles and now this is going to be labeling specific points um, specific, specific points in my project how I want the labels to uh, to show up so right now I have looks like a name and an elevation so maybe I want to have um, the northing and easting in here as well so what I can do is go into my pull down list and you can see I have all of my uh, specific information I can I want here maybe I don't really care about the name so much because I'm more I'm more interested in the coordinates so I can remove the name and here I can choose northing and hit add and then I can choose um, probably need to choose my elevation here move it down and then I'm going to choose easting and hit add move that up so now I have my northing easting an elevation. Now, um, based on my precision, again, maybe I want to just go, maybe I want three decimal places for these, and I have my position right, left, center, and my offset, how I want these to work. Uh, maybe I want these labeled, so I know what they are, so I'm going to put a N equals for that one, and a E equals for that one, Oops, this one didn't take. And equals. And then for my elevation, I'm just going to put Z. Oops, Z equals. And now it should label my points with northing, easting, elevation. All right, so this looks okay to me. I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. And now I have my label styles set up. So the next thing I need to do to, uh, to label this information is choose label lines. And for label lines, it says select what you want to label. So let's just start with um, this line string I created here. Notice when I pick these lines, it's automatically putting my bearing and my distance. You can see that uh, maybe I have a bigger gap here than I want. I can go back and shrink that down and edit that if I wish. But you can see it automatically labels it just by picking the lines. Uh, the same goes with the arc. When I choose that, you can see I have my delta angle, my radius, and my um, my arc length here. So again, I can um, adjust whether I want this above or below and adjust these gaps here. And I have some flexibility there. Now if I close this and I go label points, I have my point right down here that I wish to label. And notice when I choose that, I now have my northern easting elevation label for that point. So you can go through and you can modify these styles however you need them to, uh, to fit the scaling for your paper size and things like that to make them look good. Um, the other thing I want to show is these labels do update dynamically. So notice I'm at uh, southeast 70, 52, 40. And I'm just going to rotate this line here and show you that this will update if I make any changes to it. So under the edit tab I'm going to pick rotate objects and I'm going to rotate it around this point um, let's see it was like this let's just turn it like this notice my labels snap back to it and they automatically update to the proper bearing alright the last 
uh, step here is to dimension lines or to, to enter in dimensions. If I go back to my CAD tab and choose my dimension style under the dimensioning group, here you can see I have um, a whole bunch of settings. Again, I can create a new style. I can put my direction of where I want my dimension to be within the, you know, within the arrows, if it's always outside or inside or automatic based on the, the text size. Um, I can have it draw the line extensions if I wish. I can set the style of arrow and the size and everything there. Um, under the text tab, I can select the uh, type of text I want to use, my text style, um, position, and so on. And then also units and position of uh, the offsets for these arrows. So you see these little uh, dimension text offset is this value here. And I can set all these offsets so I can make it look exactly how I want. Once I have my dimension style set up, basically all I need to do is I can say uh, create linear dimension. And it's basically pick point A to point B. Now if I hold my shift key down on my keyboard and I right click, I get all of my snaps that show up. And I can choose end snap of this line here, shift, right click, end snap of this line here. And now you can see I have my dimension. If I go above, you can see I have my extension lines. If I go down, it's just right on there. So I can dimension that line. So my other option here is an angular dimension. Um, an angular dimension I can use to say measure angular, uh, like an arc, for example. So if I choose um, angular, create angular dimension, and I select this arc, you can see here that it's giving me basically this um, angular dimension here, which you can see corresponds with my delta angle of my arc here. So it's just another way to basically label um, this arc with just an angular dimension if you choose versus with a, um, uh, an arc label. And that concludes our tech talk on the dynamic labeling tools in Trimble Business Center 3.5. Hope that you found this session beneficial and will join us again next time. Thank you.